all so much for coming. Um, this room is full of so many people I love so much. Uh, I think we're actually going to turn it into a filibuster to see if, if I can bring you all with me uh, to Nashville. Um, I wanted to start by thanking Malvern for hosting this event. It's super last minute. Um, they're extremely gracious. Um, and uh, please uh, know that they don't charge a dime for us to hold this event or for you to be here. So the way to keep place like this open is to buy books. Um, so please do that. And I was looking around earlier and I just wanted to throw recommendations your way. Um, the Complete Stories of Carissa Spector, amazing book. Um, the Strange Case of Rachel Kay, Rachel Kushner's book is back there. Binary Star, which is amazing. Rivka Galgen's book, Little Labors, is right there. Um, there's tons of great stuff in here. So please, please, please buy something. Um, and keep a place like this, which is such an institution and such a beacon, um, uh, to keep the lights on. Um, so this is my dream reading, and uh, y'all are, are, are here dreaming with me, and I am so grateful for that. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, mute your cell phones, uh, or I'll tase you. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then so it's we'll just get. We'll just Started. I'm not doing the uh, normal bios of like who was published here and there. Just everyone has been published and has won a million awards. And, um, but I'd rather talk about um, them as, as people and their work. Um, first up is Claire Hoffman. Um, I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. Uh, Claire Hoffman made me cry in my first semester in the Missionary Program. Uh, not from critique, but from beauty. Um, she read a poem, and it was the, it was the most immediate reaction I'd ever had um, from, from going from not crying to crying. I cried a lot, um, but it was the quickest I had gone uh, from not crying to crying. And the line in that poem that, that got me was, um, I want to tell the lost not to worry so much about finding their way back, build a house where you stand and honey will follow. Um, and I needed that poem then, as I continue to need it now. Um, Claire's poems capture with enviable precision and grace the fraught, fragile human experience, as frequently fucked as it is unspeakably beautiful. In her essay, Green Eyed Verbs, Sarah Manguso says, a voice is what emerges from an informed intelligence as it reaches toward accurate perception and articulation. So here's Claire Hoffman, which is that voice. Obviously, thank you, Vincent, for putting this together. It is such a pleasure to see a lot of familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while, especially in the last couple months. Um, and it's just wonderful to see um, such a large community of people that actually care about writing, whether it be poetry or essays or fiction. Um, I'm just, my heart is totally warmed to see everyone here today on such a beautiful summer night in Austin. I'm terrible at breaking the ice, so I'm just gonna like jump right into a poem that I wrote recently um, after graduating from the Mishner Center, which as many of you know in this room is a very precarious time in one's life, um, navigating <laughs> sort of <clears throat> lost feeling that, um, that accompanies that. So, you know, it's, it's only slightly depressing. Uh, the title is Soot and Sackcloth. <clears throat> How often have I stood here upon the cold concrete of my low-income depression, a crystal in my clawed hand, gazing into the future? Locust trees seek falsetto in the pubescent, tornadic winds. My heart is yellow and quivers, helpless lizard in the oracle of a 7-Eleven neon seeking fortunes in WrestleMania scratcher tickets. How often have I slept for 11 hours and awoken sewn permanently into a dream? Often the dream is about caves or pot scum covering me in electric green. I follow one god down the hole and another back out. Who has time to vacation? I've seen an ocean of phantoms in a rusty bathtub, 
I've licked pineapple dreams off my skin in the afternoon and still never heard one syllable of another language, never eaten mollusks in the local fashion. The god of apathy settles her feathers and falls asleep in my lap. A velvet notion of my own uselessness is what I sometimes wear to parties. If you can hover in the distance and call my name just out of earshot, I will pay you in soot and sackcloth by the end of the month. This poem is called Threat of Living Entities. How do you, dear accomplice, bathe the way piquant visions lingering like garlic oil on the fingertips? A body is a network of nerves communicating fear, translucent skin of cave salamanders, blind eye of the shrew. In my dream, I am drugged down to the bottom of a pool by an orca that I love. Fugue of intermittent song, the mind's dissociative lake. Who in the world is not afraid? As a burrowing creature, I fear light. I want every rhizome thread knitted around me, all the earth's internal hairs. Dinner is served while bullets enter the bodies of real people just up the stairs. The sound, an aria for a reluctant life continuing in this illegitimate hole. Water illuminating its pores until my eyes float to the surface. My father is waiting for me in the street, wordless, as always, a tackle box in his throat. Suddenly, his hand pulls me away from the fluorescence of a grocery store, and we run from open fire down into the basement full of cereal boxes, where we die, then wake up. So I have a real treat for you guys. Uh, I've written a manifesto, um, a manifesto on s some ideas I have about poetry and, and other things. Um, it's quite strange. There are pictures, which unfortunately you won't be able to enjoy, but you can imagine them. And if anybody wants to have this, I hope you can. Uh, it's called This Manifesto. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> gets it, but I have another copy. <laughs> it's called This Manifesto is Not for Stovetop Use. Inclined to a field of unnecessary umbles, rationale plays hooky in an onion patch. Everything I've seen is unreckoned, and every unreckoning tends to jangle. So it is you hear me now with mollusks in my teeth, freshly birthed from the cave. In this space, it is admissible to become an oyster, a loose cloud, or a mineral murmur. Here, the faculties do not compete against one another for air, but vibrate at their highest frequency in unison. This is the faculty of the intellect, green and cold. This is the faculty of desire that opens and ascending desert balloons. This is the eloquent faculty of absurdity and her spiritual zip. And the rest of the wet somatic sensations that are given over to us from this physical chest of drawers. It shall no longer be within our capacity to chew anything but the cud of desire. We, like melon-headed beluga whales, must rub against each other in the ocean. We must call and await its return to bounce through us freely like a chant with messages of distance from minor gods circumfused in an atmosphere of water. Let us take a moment to undulate in underwater silence. Let us better smell the stillness that governs this to better apprehend the unknowable utterances that glide in foaming eloquence from the mouth of the mad just to make their sound. Dear chickens, do not be afraid of the cannons. They are sterile and full of clouds. Do not hesitate to eat the butterfly. A skull bites. Somewhere in a blue Midwestern basement, particles of your skin decorate the emptiness like good bits of meaning. But it is the cold meaning of equilibrium stretching its legs to feel the simple pleasure of extension, to mark the borders of its whole. Over and over it rolls. Let us drink ichor for a time and see angels. I am here to say that it is the right time for a congregation. It is the right time to be overtaken, to convulse and fall down. There is no space here for the calculating eye, the false blabbering of sound judgment be damned. 
Expose every architecture of petty hostility and let the cosmos have her filthy way with it. That slow sink into lava, that blindness. Be a hot buttered roll on the tongue of divine sadness. Poach yourself rare. Become a jellyfish in heat. Spatial arrangement performs its feathered mutation and my spirit arrives. Horde, lexicon, spiritual madness, enter here. I will roil in convulsions of simultaneous delight and derangement. I will touch the gills of God or hear it swimming past me in a fleet of silver, silver, and milky green eyefuls. If you hunger, you are. Nourishment may come in the form of sand dunes, wet stars, gorge. Let there be no mistake. I do not speak from the ether, but do possess a physical body, though it be strange, though it undoes. Like you, sweet beluga, I can feel electrical echoes with my melon. I also milk my young and feel the power of edible eternities leaving me like a pulse. It is good to know your biology so that it can be forgotten when the fragments come to fill our bowls made of bone, glimmering with necrosis. There is part of you that is cauliflower. There is part of you that knows it and sings accordingly. Let there be only mistake and accidental congregation beneath celestial bodies so that we may pro proliferate and eat raspberries to feed our failing consciousnesses. Yes, I have lost my way. A hill of spiritual ants dismembers me with a whisper, and I sleep. Thank you.